okay, so I'm back with this same exact problem where we have 2x plus 5x uh, subtract by 2 over x cubed minus 4x. And I want to turn this into a, uh, I want to use partial fraction decomposition in order to take care of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, how do I figure this out? Now there is actually a method here. And before I continue, we have to reduce our denominator of sorts. Uh, not reduce, but factor our denominator in order to use this in terms of distinct linear factors. Can we uh, factor out our denominator and make it a little bit easier? And the answer is yes. It turns out to be, now we can factor out an x, and what we're left with is x squared minus 4. When we factor out an x, we're left with x squared minus 4. But we're going to go ahead and factor x squared minus 4 as well. That turns out to be x plus 2, x minus 2. Let me go ahead and erase this. So actually, when we're doing decomposition of factors here, uh, fractions, pardon me, partial fractions, we're actually going to have 5x subtracted by 2 over x times x plus 2 times x minus 2. We're going to ignore the 2x for right now. And we're going to turn this into separate fractions. So we'll see how that goes. Now in order to do that, you have to debate whether it's quadratic or linear. And all of these terms are linear, so there's actually a specific method that we use in order to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that 5x subtracted by 2 Eh, I don't know if you can see that, so I'm going to go ahead and do it over here. 5x subtracted by 2 over x times x plus 2, x minus 2 in their own quantities is separated into three particular fractions. And in this case, it's something over x plus something over x plus 2 plus something over x minus 2. Now, what we're going to put on top aren't variables, but I get in the habit of doing that, so if I ever do that, you know, it's my mistake. But anyways, we're going to, it's going to be something over x plus something over x plus 2 plus something over x minus 2. And the reason why we do that is that's our, that's our form that we use when we use um, partial fractions. When, there, when it's distinct linear uh, factors, that's how we do it. Each one's linear. Now, we don't know what's going to be here, we don't know what's going to be here, we don't know what's going to be here. So we're going to put something down. Uh, to kind of symbolize that. And what it is, is it's, we're just going to put an A here. I don't know what it's going to be. I'm going to put a B here. I don't know what it's going to be. I'm going to put a C here. I don't know what it's going to be yet. Well, yeah, maybe I do, but whatever the case. Now we're going to solve for A, B, and C. In order to do that, we've got to get rid of the denominator. Make this a little bit more friendly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this whole equation by this denominator. So this term is going to be multiplied by x, x plus 2, x minus 2 on the top. This one, this one, and this one as well. And it's x, x plus 2, x minus 2 over 1. That's something that students usually get wrong. Now when I go ahead and do that, what I get is this. Well, all of these are going to cancel. I'm going to be left with 5x subtracted by 2. If I multiply all three of these by this one, in the numerator, mind you, I'm going to get a, the x's go away, got x plus 2, x subtracted by 2. Then I'm going to have b, the x plus 2's go away, I'm going to be left with x, x minus 2, and then the x minus 2's will go away, I'll be left with c, x, x plus 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out, well, is, is there like some kind of specific values I can you know, put into this problem to make it a little bit easier to figure out my a, b, and c? And the answer is yes, there is. There is distinct x values that you can use. Uh, here's an example. If x equals, I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, maybe I can come up with something special. And there is something I can do. If I plug in a 2, that could be special. A negative 2 or a 0, that would be special. Uh, plugging in a 3 is not going to work because what happens is it's not going to turn a quantity into 0, which will make it 0. For instance, if I pick negative 2, if this becomes 0, then everything with the C becomes 0 too, so that'd be really cool. Now, the value I'm going to actually use is I'm going to use 0, if x equals 0. And the reason why is, if x is 0, then all of a sudden this will go away, and this will go away, but this one will stay around. So I'm going to plug in 0 to every x that you see, or substitute x into every value that you see. I'm going to get 5 times 0 minus 2, which is negative 2, equals, okay, so that'll be 2, that'll be negative 2, which is negative 4, a, 0 times anything else is going to be 0. 0 times anything else is going to be 0. 
I'm going to figure out my A term, which is divided by negative 4, A equals 1 half. There you go. Now I'm going to do the same method in order to try to figure out my B or my C. If x equals, well, I'm not going to use 0 now. I'm going to use something a little bit friendlier. I have a choice of 2 or negative 2. And in this case, I'm going to pick 2 because I think 2 is just easier to substitute for. If x equals 2, what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to get 10 minus 2, which is 8, equals, OK, if I plug in 2 here or substitute in 2, that makes it a 0. I don't even have to worry about anything. I'm not going to care. I don't care if a is 1 half because everything's going to be 0. Bam. Don't even worry about it. If um, x is 2 here, well, that's going to be 0 times, doesn't matter. If x is 2 here, that's going to be 4. And that's going to be a 2. So it's going to be 4 times 2, which is 8c. When I divide both sides by 8, it's c equals 1. Now there's a couple of ways I can do this too. I can substitute in negative 2 now, or I can substitute in any x value I want. Well, except for 0 or 2, because that's just going to be doing the same thing that we did. And it's your choice what you really want to do here. But I would say, eh, substitute in the easiest x value that you can, or just substitute in, substitute in another value like negative 2, and you'll get rid of these two, and you'll be left with just a b. That's my advice. Or you could substitute in 1, and then just figure everything in, and figure out your b. Either way. So, if x is negative 2, then I'm going to get negative 10 minus 12, excuse me, negative 10 minus 2, which is negative 12, equals, okay, if I put in a negative 2, that's going to be 0, pff, don't even have to worry about it. If I put in a negative 2, pff, that's going to be 0, don't even have to worry about it. If I put in a negative 2, that's going to be negative 4, negative 4 times negative 2 is 8, 8b. Divide by 8 on both sides. And you get b equals, let's see, that's 6 over 4, that's 3 over 2, negative 3 halves. Great. So what did I just do? Well, I'm going to show you. Now this problem right here is 5x minus 2 over x cubed minus 4x, which I turned into this, is actually this right here. I can rewrite it as these three fractions. So that's what I'm going to do. So it's a over x. Mm, my a is 1 half. So it's actually 1 over 2x, or 1x over 2. Oops. Actually, x is on the bottom. 1 over 2x plus b. Well, my b is negative 3 halves, so it's negative 3 over 2. And then it's x plus 2. Plus c. My c is 1 over x minus 2. Well, these three fractions give me 5x subtract by 2 over x times x plus 2, x minus 2. But that's not actually that everything that we have to deal with, because when we did this original problem, we want to rewrite it all as a fraction. So, okay, this divided by this turns into this plus this, but this is rewritten as this, but I still have to account for that 2x in the front. So that's what it is. It's 2x plus 1 over 2x plus negative 3 over 2 times x times the quantity x plus 2 plus 1 over the quantity x minus 2. Like I said, that might seem a little difficult for students to comprehend, fathom, or even want to just buy into. But actually, when you use more complex mathematics, it's not terribly difficult at all. In fact, you know, it's, well, it's not the only way of doing something, but it makes things a lot easier. Uh, it makes problems a lot more approachable, especially when you're figuring out the antiderivative. But students don't like that when they don't do it. So it, it's kind of a, it's a bridge into complex math, but you have to be willing to go there too. So that's all I really have to say about this particular example. We're going to do a couple more. That's pretty much it there. I hope that's at least somewhat helpful. It's actually a very long, lengthy problem, and you have to uh, do a lot of stuff. So if you don't have the necessary skills beforehand to do it, you got to practice that before you do partial fractions. Otherwise, they can be. It can be a nightmare. Uh, with that said, have a good day. Goodbye.